The ancient castle towered above the forest surrounding it. The moon provided enough light to see my surroundings, but it painted an eerie picture nonetheless. I approached the entrance to the castle, stopping on the path in front of it. I was supposed to meet my contact there, but there was no one in sight. I decided to wait for a little bit, hoping they would still show up. I wasn't looking forward to entering the place on my own. After having waited over 15 minutes, I started to look around. The path leading up to the castle was fairly wide, but the rain had caused it to be quite muddy, which made it uncomfortable to walk on. Eventually, my eyes wandered across a disturbed patch of grass. Twigs were broken and flowers ruined. Upon closer inspection, I seemed to find the faintest hint of a red substance. Blood, perhaps? A small trail seemed to lead down the hill. My eyes wandered down, where I saw a dark figure deep below. It was hard to see in the darkness, but it almost looked like a... Mr. Vario? My thoughts were interrupted, and I turned around to face whoever addressed me. I was greeted by an old man dressed up in some kind of medieval armour. He was slightly leaning forward and supporting himself with a walking cane. I raised my hand and offered to shake his. He gave me a small bow in response, but kept his distance. It's good to meet you, the man continued. I was starting to worry nobody was going to come and help me. I'm only here to assess the situation. I haven't made any promises yet. Yes, yes, of course, the man responded as he took a few slow and uneasy steps towards me. But at least you're willing to take a look. That's a start. Now, please, follow me. Let us head inside. This is no time to be standing outside. We walked towards a large gate together in complete silence. When we reached the door, the man motioned for me to open it. So, I did. Once through, I found myself standing in a large, decorated hall with a small welcoming table and register to my side. The room was dimly lit, enough to see my surroundings, but it did create an uncomfortable atmosphere. Is this the place? I asked as I looked around, not noticing anything remarkable. No, no, the man said as he continued walking in front of me. This is where our visitors enter, and from where we start our tours of the castle. The problem resides in the much more unused parts of the castle. Of course, I replied. And this problem wouldn't just so happen to be in the basement or dungeon, would it? I asked sarcastically as I followed the old man. He sheepishly smiled at me in response. I followed him through the hall. He wasn't exactly quick, so I had plenty of time to observe my surroundings. The castle was old, and it definitely showed it but was kept in a relatively clean condition nonetheless. The amount of money they received from our tours must have been substantial to support the maintenance of the castle. I assume you familiarised yourself with the information I sent you? The man then asked. The way he asked it was slightly off-putting, but I didn't think much of it. I'm familiar with the case, yes. It's hard to miss the 14 people that have gone missing from your tours in the last couple of weeks. Ah, yes, the man responded, somewhat awkwardly. I hate to ask, but... Have you... We've kept it hidden from the public. All deaths were written off to some other cause. No one will blame this place. Good, thank you, the man responded. He was clearly relieved. He didn't say anything else, and just kept walking through the various halls and rooms. Eventually, I started to lose my patience, and asked him where we were going. All the way down, the man responded as he tapped his walking cane on the floor. He made no noise. To the problem, to the bodies. I wanted to ask more, but the man suddenly slipped off into a small room. I followed him and was greeted by a small shelf and a large wooden door. It looked to be in a much worse condition than the rest of the castle. The man turned around and motioned towards the shelf. Behind the books, there's a small vault. The code is 3974. You'll find the key for the door inside. Please open the door so we may proceed. I stood still for a moment, staring at the old man with a confused expression. 
as I wondered why the hell this guy couldn't just grab the key himself. I did as he asked. He moved some books to the side, which indeed revealed a small vault which had a key. I slowly opened the heavy wooden door, which revealed a staircase spiraling down. The old man stared at me, causing my skin to crawl. Something about his gaze made me extremely uncomfortable. The path ahead is extremely dark, Mr. Vario. Please, perhaps you should take off your mask so you may see better, the man suggested. I declined and told him I'd keep it on for safety. He continued to stare at me for a little while. Let us continue, the man eventually said as he started to descend into the darkness. I followed him. We've had to lock the doors, the man then started as we descended the stairs, to keep the visitors from wandering off, you know. Those that lie below, they call to some of them, trick them into going down these very stairs towards their certain doom. So why not just keep the doors locked then? I asked. For every door we lock, they find another one we'd never seen before, in some remote part of the castle. No, this cannot be contained by locked wooden doors, Mr. Vario. Tell me about this place, I then said. It couldn't hurt to hear what the old man had to say. Long ago, when this castle was still newly built, there was a fight amongst the family about who had ownership of the land. They fought for the rights and eventually ended up all killing each other, causing the estate to end up abandoned. Decades later, the country was terrorized by terrible, terrible people. It was awful, Mr. Vario. Truly awful. He stopped his story as we reached the bottom of the stairs. We were standing in a medium-sized room with a bunch of carvings on the walls. We were definitely underground, and there were no windows, but various lit candles and torches throughout the room provided enough light to see. Against one of the walls, I spotted what appeared to be an old sarcophagus. It had been opened. These people, the man continued, terrorized the land for years and years, but eventually, the townsfolk and knights managed to slay these cursed men, ending their reign of terror. But it wasn't entirely over, as they still had to take care of the bodies. Everyone agreed they had to be locked away, of course, but nobody wanted to house or deal with the cursed bodies. They buried them all here, he then said grimly. All of them. They turned this place into a prison for the dead. They placed the bodies into these stone prisons, believing it would keep them from coming back, from terrorizing them once more. And it worked. The man slowly walked over to the sarcophagus, and I did the same. We both cautiously peered inside, but were greeted by an empty space. There was nothing inside. But, of course, as is the case for all evil, he doesn't truly stay dead forever. The moment the words left the man's mouth, I heard a faint voice deeper inside the castle calling for me. Shivers ran down my spine as the awful voice echoed throughout the halls and rooms. They've returned, and they're suffering, trapped inside these stone contraptions, cursed inside of their partly decayed bodies, never alive but never dead either. But there is a way, a way for them to come back. I took a step back from the empty sarcophagus, Try not to think about what could have been in there centuries ago. I scanned the various halls connected to our room, but couldn't see anything noteworthy. It was silent as well. The man started walking again, so I swiftly followed him, not wanting to be left alone in this maze of hallways and rooms. Occasionally, I could swear I heard voices in the distance, but the man didn't seem to notice, so we kept walking. We stopped inside another room, Another open sarcophagus stood against the wall. There was something else in front of it, but I couldn't quite make out what it was in the dim light. I slowly approached, leaving the old man behind me, but I almost retreated immediately when I realized what it was. The body of a man laid hunched over against the sarcophagus. His expression was frozen in a perpetual state of pain. The clothes he wore were modern, so this was likely to be one of the missing people. I kneeled down next to the man to try and find any wounds or reasons for his death. A touch, the man said. I turned around to look back towards him, 
but my heart skipped a beat when I found him standing right next to me. I didn't hear him approach at all. That's all they need. They lure them here, trick them into touching their cursed vessels, and are then born anew. The poor trick souls are left behind to rot. He turned away and started walking, as if this had just been a small side activity, but nothing that deserved a lot of attention. So they trick them into coming down here? How? I asked. Some lure them with visions, some with voices, and others even with something completely different. It all depends. Some are able to much more than others. Unfortunately, it's those that you especially don't want to let out. I nodded as I stepped away from the body. I was starting to suspect that I'd find every missing person somewhere inside these catacombs if I looked hard enough. When I turned around, I realized the man had gone on without me. Despite his slow walking speed, he had completely disappeared from my view. I cautiously stepped into a corridor, peeking around the corners to see whether I could spot the man, but he was nowhere to be found. Hello? I called out as I walked through the corridor. It wasn't until now that I realized how cold it was down there. I started shivering as I continued my search for my guide. Come to me, a soft female voice called out from right behind me. I turned around instantly, but saw nothing. Over here, a different masculine voice then chimed in. Help us, another voice echoed. I started to panic slightly, repeatedly looking over my shoulder to make sure nothing was creeping up on me. More and more voices started to echo throughout the halls and chambers. I stumbled through the halls trying to get away from them as the voices became louder and louder. I turned a corner and finally saw the old man in the distance. He waved at me and disappeared into another passage. I started to chase him, but I moved slowly, using the walls to support myself as the voices became unbearably loud and demanding. I entered the passage and saw the old man standing next to a sarcophagus in a room up ahead. He was beckoning me to come over. I stumbled through the passage, almost falling over twice. The voices only increased, making me feel like my ears were about to burst. I was almost there. The man was so close. I almost made it. I just had to get into the room, get to the sarcophagus. Mr. Vario? The other voices stopped the moment that familiar voice called out from behind. The sudden silence felt almost threatening. I instinctively turned around to see where the noise came from, even though I knew the old man stood in front of me. Yet, when I turned around, I saw him staring at me from down the corridor, from where I came. There's nothing that way, Mr. Vario. It's a dead end, he said calmly. Confused, I turned around again to face the room, but besides the sarcophagus, it was completely empty. I was frozen in place for a second as I tried to process what had happened. We shouldn't linger here for too long, the old man said. Let us continue, we were almost there. I turned back around to face the man, but he was already walking away once more. Not wanting to be left alone again, I quickly made my way over to him. I think I've seen enough for now, I'd like to leave now so I can discuss the situation with my colleagues. I said, shaking by what had just happened. The old man shook his head slowly as he kept walking. Nonsense. You haven't seen the most important parts yet. You cannot leave until you have. Whatever more you want to show me can wait. I'd like to leave for now. The old man stopped for a moment, looking over his shoulder with a faint grin. The dim lighting made him appear more threatening than he did before. I will bring you back when we're done. If you want to leave now, you'll have to find your way back on your own. I clenched my fist in response before briefly looking down. All the halls and rooms looked the same, and I had no idea where I'd come from. We wandered around here for so long, there was no way I'd find my way back alone. Both of us knew this. Fine, let's get this over with, I muttered. We walked through more halls for what felt like hours. The rest of the journey was mostly uneventful. 
Eventually, we stood before a large wooden door. There were several crosses hammered on it. The man motioned for me to open the door, and so I did. I entered a massive room filled with stone statues and ornaments, all depicting a certain knight I did not recognize. At the end of the long room stood a throne, behind which I spotted another sarcophagus, yet this one was beautifully decorated. Whoever died here must have been greatly honored during his life. We are here, the old man spoke. What you seek lies inside there. He pointed to the sarcophagus. He walked over to it, passing the giant statues. Who's depicted here? I asked. The man shook his head in response. I do not know. It does not matter. He retorted, sounding quite defensive. I observed the sarcophagus and placed my hand on the cold stone, ready to open it. Wait, your man spoke from behind me. You must take off your helmet, your gloves. This, this needs to be experienced without anything blocking your senses. No, I responded firmly as I started to push against the stone. I insist, the old man spat at me. You must take it off, do as I say. He yelled as I opened and looked inside the sarcophagus. The body of an old man lay inside, dressed in a wealthy knight's armor. His body was unnaturally well preserved, and I almost immediately recognized it to be the body of my guide. I swiftly turned around, but the old man was nowhere to be seen, as if he had vanished into thin air. An awful scream came from behind me, and something grabbed my head from behind, pulling at my mask. I tried to escape the grasp as I was pulled into the sarcophagus. Old fingers scratched my mask's visor, making it hard for me to see. The fingers pulled at my armor, trying to find a way to my skin. I wildly flailed around and managed to break free from the rotting arms. I fell forward onto the ground and quickly turned to face my aggressor. The half-rotten body of the man hung over the sarcophagus's edge, moaning as it stretched its finger out in an attempt to touch me. I swiftly got back on my feet and ran as fast as I could back into the underground maze. I've not been able to find my way back. I've wandered these halls for what feels like days, but still have not found an exit or even a place I recognized from before. I'm trapped in this hell, whatever it may be. Even worse, the old man is back. I've heard him call out my name as he roams the halls, looking for me. He's not alone, for I keep seeing things in the corner of my eyes, things that disappear when I look for them, but are always there when I do not wish to see them. My only option is to keep venturing deeper and deeper into the depths of this hell. The amount of bodies I find littered through the halls only increases, and I fear this is the last time I will have any ability to share my story before I continue onwards. When I am rested, I will explore further, but whatever happens, I won't let the old man get his hands on me. I will either escape or perish by my own hands. Whatever path lies ahead of me, let it be known to all, secrecy be damned, that the castle of Fergic is beyond saving. My advice is for it to be closed and sealed, hidden for all eternity, so that whatever lies beneath will not be given a new vessel. I can hear the old man nearby. He offered to let me live. He toys with me, yelling through the halls that I will never find my way back on my own, but that he could help me. And in return, all he needs is a touch. <laughs>